Okay, hi all. So in this video, I want to go through uh, a cash and production budget. It's uh, from the 2009 paper, it's question nine. Now it's labeled as cash budgeting, but it's a cash and production budget. And you'll notice the difference by the way it's laid out, it's difference between this and a cash budget, and also by what you're asked to do. You have to pair, uh, prepare a production budget, then prepare a materials purchases budget, a cash budget, and then a budgeted trading profit and loss account. So if I just take the first one first, the production budget, uh, it's similar to production budgets, uh, a production budget in the production budget question. However, uh, slightly different because instead of having two products, you only have one product. And also, um, instead of having just one time period, they ask you to make the production budget for four months. Okay, so it's kind of a, a mix between a production budget and a cash budget. So if we start off, uh, we'll call it our title production budget. Okay, and since it was for the four months, January to April, we'll label January, Feb, March, April, and even though you're not required to have a column for May, we're going to um, do May's column also because we will need that or some information from that uh, in order to do the next part of the question. So not required, no marks going for it, but we'll need the figures from this in order to do the next part of the question. Okay, so uh, first things first, in a production budget, we start with what's uh, the sales that you are forecasting for the period. So the sales here are going to... So, uh, the sales figures in units just come from the question here, 8,000, 8,500, etc. So here, 8,000, 8,500, 10,000, and 11,000, and lastly for me it's 11,500. Okay, so these are all just these sales figures in units from the top of the question. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is, uh, in order to work out uh, how much that we want to produce, and that's what we're looking to, to calculate in a production budget. Well, first of all, we need to produce in January 8,000 units of whatever it is we're producing because we want to sell 8,000 units. So we have to manufacture them or produce them. However, if we want to have some left over in our warehouse, in other words, if we want to have a closing stock, then we have to produce more than 8,000 units. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plus closing stock. And if we add on the amount of closing stock, the amount of units we want to have left over at the end of the month onto what we intend to sell for the month, then that in total becomes what we want to manufacture for the month. So in order to calculate the closing stock, we have to look at what it says about stocks and uh, closing stocks in this, uh, the rest of the question here. So it says, stocks of finished goods are maintained at 60% of the following month's sales requirement. So it means at the end of January, we want to have 60% of the units that we're going to sell in February. We have them all ready to go for February. So what we want to do is we want to get 60% of 8,500. So on our calculator, my way of doing it is I just get um, 8,000, or sorry, 8,500. Turn on the calculator here. 8,500 and I multiply by 0 0.6 to get 60%. It gives me 5,100. That's going to be my closing stock for January. I do the same for February. I get March's uh, sales and I multiply by 0 0.6. That will give me 6,000. It's an easier one. Uh, then for April, I multiply by 0 0.6 and that will give me 6,600. And then May's 11,500 multiplied by 0 0.6 gives me 6,900. So I just add them on there and adding them up, that's going to give me 13,100. It's going to be 14,500. It's going to be 16,600. This is going to be 17,900. And as I say, we don't need May's, 
but um, we're going to we're going to do this column anyway. Now, in order to get the closing stock, we need to get um, sixty percent of the following month's sales. So that's why we also have June's figures in here. So we're going to get sixty percent of this ten thousand five hundred, which gives me six thousand three hundred. Okay. So uh, next thing then is I need to add that on, don't I? That's 17,800. Okay, and now we're ready for the next part. And the next part is, well, if we want to, in January, for instance, sell 8,000 units and have this many left over at the end of the month, then we need to produce 13,100. However, if we have already got some stock in our warehouse at the start of the month, then we don't have to manufacture as many as uh, uh, as this, as many as 13,100. So what we're going to do then is we're going to subtract the opening stock, that's any units that we have in our warehouse at the start of the year, start of the month in this case. Now, since it says that Green Limited is preparing to set up a business, that means if they're just starting, they won't have any left over from the previous month here. They won't have any left over from December in their warehouse at the start of January. So opening stock in January is going to be zero. In February, our opening stock is going to be, well, it's going to be whatever we had left over at the end of January. It's going to be the same as our closing stock in January. That's what we'll have at the start of February. So that's 5,100. We're just taking closing stock from uh, January and that's our opening stock in February. Same closing stock in February becomes our opening stock in March and so on and so on. So 6,000, 6,600, 6,900. And we're subtracting, so we'll use the brackets to show that we're subtracting. And we'll get our totals. So 13,100 minus nothing is just 13,100. Uh, this will come to nine, four. This will be 10, 6. This will be 11, 3. And this will be 10, 9. Okay? And those figures we say required for production. Our budgeted production will be fine as well. Budgeted production. That's what we imagine we're budgeting, we're going to produce or manufacture in our warehouse.